the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Father Almighty of heaven and earth, of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary, Mary. suffered in the Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, crucified, dead and buried. buried. And buried. The third day, he ascended into heaven, heaven and, and, and sitteth sit on the right and hand in the right of the Father Almighty. From thence, From thence, we shall come to judge the, the, the quick and the dead. And the dead. I believe and in the Holy Spirit, the, Holy Spirit, the Church Universal, the, Church Universal, the Communion of the, the Saints, of the, Saints the, forgiveness the Forgiveness of Sins, of the Resurrection of the Body, of the body and, the and the Life of the Lasting. Amen. 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 Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We are grateful for your faithfulness in our lives and every moment and time you have provided for us. There is no mountain too high or valley too low to prevent the outcome of your divine plan. Strengthen us in our journey and reinforce our faith with your presence your love, and your power. These things we ask in the precious name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, kingdom come. thy, kingdom come. thy will be done. Will be done. Be done on earth, on earth on as earth. it is in heaven. Is in heaven. Give us yes. this day, this day, our daily bread, daily bread, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us, deliver us from, from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory, and the glory forever. 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 And Amen. Amen. Today's lesson is Babylonian captivity ends. The lesson scripture is Ezra chapter one and chapter two, verses 64 through 70. The focus, focus scripture is Ezra chapter one, verses one through eight and verse 11. And chapter two, verses 64 through 70. The key verse together, as soon as they came to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, some of the heads of families made farewell offerings, free will offerings for the house of God to erect on its side. Ezra chapter 2, verse 8. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, in, or, in order that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of King Cyrus of Persia, so that he sent a herald throughout all his kingdom, and also in a written edict declared, thus the King Cyrus of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth 
Any of those among you who are of his people, may their God be with them, are now permitted to go up to Jerusalem in Judah and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. And let all survivors in whatever place be with with blood and with animals, beside the will of the house of God in Jerusalem. The heads of the families of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites, everyone whose spirit God has stirred, got ready to go up and rebuild the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. All their neighbors aided them with silver vessels, with gold, gold, with goods, animals, and valuable gifts, besides all that was freely offered. King Cyrus himself brought out the vessels of the house of the Lord that Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and placed in the house of his gods. King Cyrus of Persia had them released the charge of Mithridates, the treasurer, who counted the prince of Judah. The total of the gold and silver vessels was 5,400. All these Shisha Bazar brought up with the exiles were brought up from Babylonium to Jerusalem. The whole assembly, the assembly together, together. 42,360. Besides their male and female servants, of whom there were 7,337, and they had 200 male and female singers. They had 736 horses, 245 435 camels, and 6,720 donkeys. As soon as, as, soon as, as, as they the house came to the house Lord, in Jerusalem, some of the heads of the family made yuck offerings for the house of God to erect it on its site. According to their resources, they gave to the building fund 61,000 derricks of gold, 5,000 minas of silver, and 100 priestly robes. 70 together. The priests, the priests the Levites, and some of the people lived in, in Jerusalem and then in his vicinity. And, and the singers, singers and the temple servants lived, lived in their towns, and all, all Israel in their towns. Their towns. Hear what Christ our Savior said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be, Glory be the Father. To the Father.
and, and to the Son, Son and, and to the, and Holy, to the Holy, Ghost, Ghost, Holy Ghost, as it was, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, now, is now, and, and it shall, shall, be, shall be, world now is the end. Amen. 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 Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. So oh, happy to see all of you there today. Uh, we're going to start with an opening prayer, and I'm going to ask Brother Wade if he would lead us in the class opening prayer this morning. Brother Wade? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to come boldly but humbly before your righteous and mighty throne. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank always have you. to start off with saying thank you thank for you. who you are and what you are to us, dear Lord. Thank yes. you for blessing us, dear Lord. Even when we were enemies, dear Lord, you blessed us, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord, for loving us first. <clears throat> thank you, dear Lord, for, for keeping us, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord, for working, dear Lord, uh, uh, behind the scenes, dear Lord, uh, and, and keeping us from things that we thought we wanted, we thought we needed, dear Lord. But you knew that it was not pleasing to you, and it would be a separator, dear Lord, from between you and us. So thank you, dear Lord, for what did not happen, dear Lord. Thank you for your staying and your keeping power. Thank you for your love, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord, for letting us get up this morning, dear Lord. Close, dear Lord, with activity in our limbs, dear Lord, dear Lord, in our right mind, dear Lord, to be found in the house of the Lord, to be able to say hallelujah, be able to say thank you, Jesus, to be able to say hi to the other saints, dear Lord, and to share your word. And oh, yes, dear Lord, to be able to get a comb through our hair, dear Lord, or be able to get a brush across it, dear Lord. We just want to say thank you, dear Lord, because some did not get up this morning, dear Lord. Yeah. Dear Lord, but you saw fit to wave your finger of love over us, dear Lord. And we are, dear Lord, in the house of the Lord, dear Lord, with your people, dear Lord, singing hallelujah, dear Lord, singing praises to the highest. So thank you, dear Lord, dear Lord, because this week has been tough for some, dear Lord, dear Lord, some had medical appointments, dear Lord, and, and, and we're not happy with the news, dear Lord, some, dear Lord, met with their employer and was not happy with the news, dear Lord, but you are still God, dear Lord, and you are still on the throne. So thank you, dear Lord. Some woke up to war, dear Lord. Some woke up to bombs exploding around them, dear Lord, but you are still yet on the throne, dear Lord. So, dear Lord, we just say thank you, dear Lord. We pray, dear Lord, that you would go ahead and bless, dear Lord, and continue to keep, dear Lord, the shepherd of your house, dear Lord, that you've given, dear Lord, to him, dear Lord, Pastor Payne, dear Lord. Bless all that is under his hand that he chooses to do, dear Lord. And, dear Lord, bless St. Mary's, dear Lord. Every, dear Lord, member, dear Lord, from the youngest to the oldest, dear Lord, on the roster, dear Lord. Dear Lord, bless him in a circumstance, a situation, dear Lord. And, dear Lord, we're going to boldly pray, dear Lord, for 5,000, dear Lord. Yes, yes, 5,000, dear Lord, new active members, dear Lord. But dear Lord, that's just a number, dear Lord, because you don't count numbers, you make numbers count. So dear Lord, whatever you send us, dear Lord, we'll be thankful Hallelujah. for you, dear Lord. Whatever you send us, dear Lord, we, we will use, dear Lord, for the further upkeep of your kingdom, dear Lord. So dear Lord, we pray, dear Lord, for those, dear Lord, that are sick, dear Lord, and shut in, dear Lord, cancer, COVID, dear Lord. Uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, other diverse diseases, dear Lord, ailments and pains, dear Lord. We rebuke them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And say, the Come of back Jesus. to where they came from, dear Lord. Mm -hmm. Dear Lord, we just pray, dear Lord, that we will open our ears and open our hearts, dear Lord, to listen, dear Lord, to take on your word and take it out into a dying world so it shall not return void, dear Lord. So now we pray that you will bless the Sunday school teacher, dear Lord, and the household, dear Lord. And you pray, we pray that you will bless all your people, dear Lord, not only in St. Mary's, dear Lord, but all your yes. people that stamp with your name, Christian, dear Lord, and just yes. bless and heal, dear Lord, because we know, dear Lord, we have a, a week that's coming up, but we know that we have a mighty God, dear Lord, that we serve a mighty God, dear Lord, and great is he that is in us and he that is in the world. So we yes. thank you, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, for uh, this lesson that we're going to learn, dear Lord. And we thank you, dear Lord, for being, dear Lord, open to hear your word, dear Lord, and to learn it more excellent, dear Lord. Because as your word proclaimed, dear Lord, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So we thank you. We love you. We bless you. And we ask all these precious blessings in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God, we receive. Amen. Thank you. All right. Our lesson today is 
Babylonian captivity ends. And the lesson scripture is Ezra 1, also chapter 2, 64 through 70. Now, we like to ask the question, in 2022, why would this lesson be relevant to us? The Babylonian captivity ends. Is it just a history lesson? Is there a reason that God uh, want us to study about this today? Can anybody relate this to their lives? I mean, I don't want us just to come to Sunday school and read the Sunday school lesson. What's in it for me? You know, when I mm -hmm. think about, uh, was somebody, uh, Daphne, were you about to say something, baby? No. Mm -mm. Okay, okay. When I, when, when, you know, I could put, <clears throat> I could substitute Babylonian for Eula. <laughs> I could say when Eula's captivity ended, <laughs> you know, because we all have been in places where we should not have been. We all have fallen short. You know, and the Babylonians, and we're going to talk about this um, a little bit more, but the Israelites, they were disobedient to God. They didn't do what God told them to do. You know, they, they rebelled against God. And God allowed the Babylonians to capture them and take them away from their home. But before that happened, God was so merciful that he sent prophets to tell them, you know, change your ways, turn around, God is not pleased. And what did they do to those prophets? They mocked them, they made fun of them, they abused some of them. <laughs> and no doubt many of them died because they were bringing the message of God to a people that didn't want to hear it. But when we look at the lesson today, and I want to say to those who haven't been attending this type of Sunday school class, we welcome any revelations that God has given you during your studies, because it may be one of us that need to hear what God has revealed to you. But if you put Twyla's captivity in, so Wade captivity in, I'm sure you all have had some lion den moments, not just the two I called out. Anybody on this line probably has had a lion's den moment where you did what God told you to do. You end up in a place where people wanted to kill you. And it's so God locked the jaws <laughs> of your enemies. I, I'm sure some of you may have been in the place of the three Hebrew boys thrown into the fiery furnace. And when they came out, not a hair on their head was singed. So those are the kind of things we want to talk about when, when your captivity ended, you know, whatever it was, some may be more than others. We don't know. I'm not asking anybody to say, but we just want to deal with why does God still want us to study this type of lesson in 2022? You know, because even though these people were disobedient and they were allowed to go into exile as captives, God never left them. As he said, he would never leave you nor forsake you. We see that he's a promise keeper. If he said it, it's going to happen. And, and we'll see that in the lesson before, as in Brother Way's famous words, before I get ahead of myself, <laughs> let us go ahead. And because what I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, it's easy for me to get off cue. <laughs> okay. So when we look at today's lesson background, this book of Ezra, it gives us an account of the exiled Jews returned to their homeland. They were disobedient. God allowed the Babylonians to capture them and put them in exile. Jeremiah the prophet had predicted that the nation of Israel would, this would happen, but they would return after 70 years. It's also believed that Cyrus may have been shown the prophecy of Isaiah 
in 44, 28 through 45 and six. And that was written a century earlier than this happened, which uh, Isaiah predicted that Cyrus would help the Jews return to Jerusalem. The time for God's people to return home had arrived, just as Isaiah said. When we look at the book of Ezra, we're going to see this lesson um, taught through the eyes of those who were returning refugees. So does anybody know anything about Ezra? Have you ever heard of Ezra before? Anybody? Before today's lesson, who was he? Anybody? A Jewish scribe, uh, scribe and his, yep. his name means help or helper. Oh, all right, good. Okay, anybody else? I got, I'm trying to adjust the screen where I can see all of your lovely faces. <laughs> okay, that's not happening. Thank you, Brother Way. Um, just for those who, who can't just uh, call anything up is exactly what um, Brother Wade just said. But Ezra was the second of three leaders to lead Babylon for the reconstruction of Jerusalem. Zerubbabel constructed the temple, Nehemiah built the walls, but Ezra restored the worship. He was captive in the Babylonian captivity he was a scribe and a priest. As a scribe, his duty was to copy, interpret, and transmit the books of the law. That's what a scribe did. Mm -hmm. So just, just a little information there before we get into the lesson, because we want to look at Cyrus's decree. That's Ezra 1, 1 through 4. I'm going to ask someone to read these verses that's on the screen. If you can't see it, if it's not quite big enough for you, uh, just read it from your Sunday school book or your Bible. Can I get a volunteer to read verses one through four? Okay. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, in the order that the world, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished. The Lord stirred up the spirit of King Cyrus of Persia so that he sent a herald throughout all his kingdom and also in a written edit declared, thus said King Cyrus of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of those among you who are of his people, may their God be with them, are now permitted to go up to Jerusalem in Judah and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. And let all survivors in whatever place they reside be assisted by the people of their place with silver and gold with goods and with animals, besides free will offerings for the house of God in Jerusalem. All right, thank you, Sister Daphne. Okay, I just wanna make it clear that when the scripture says in the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, they're not talking about uh, he just became a king. The, this is the first year he became a king. I mean, he was a king before they um, they conquered uh, Babylon. His daddy was a king. Um, he conquered um, um, Mes uh, the oh I'm sorry I'm tripping on my words. He conquered a lot of different places to create his empire. Babylon was just one of them. Okay, so I just wanted to make that clear. So when Sister Daphne read in, the, in order that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of King Cyrus of Persia. What are we talking about? 
so that the words of Jeremiah would be accomplished. That they, they were gonna come true. They were gonna be fulfilled. What had been spoken is gonna manifest. Oh, okay. All right. That's true. Okay, so Sister Jackie, this, mm -hmm. was, this was not a case of um, uh, man's humanity that people just saw that this wasn't right and these people need to, uh, to go or it wasn't no picketing or anything to force. This was not a, a civil issue that the right. people be released, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a King Cyrus, it was this wasn't his God, right? Right. So what happened to make him do what God's providence said was going to happen anyway? He stirred up the spirit mm -hmm. inside of him. Right. Stirred. He stirred it up. When God touches you and stirs you, even in everyday life, Right. Sometimes we think that we had a good idea and we did a good mm -hmm. thing. You know, it's a stirring that's happening on the inside of us through the power of the Holy Spirit that really mm -hmm. causes us to do it. We didn't just wake up one day with a great idea. Mm -hmm. And this is how, what we're going to do for the world, <laughs> you know. And, and I, I think, too, maybe sometimes... Uh, most of the time we say, and something told me. Yeah. Is that not the stirring what you're speaking yeah. of for us? Yeah. 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 We, just, we just wonder sometimes that somebody or something told me not to go that way. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's and the I went anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But that's our spirit speaking to us. Oh, yes, yes. And wreck my car because I went that way. I'm just oh, saying, uh -huh. so many things happen mm -hmm. to us. Oh, did I drink? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted us to know that this guy didn't just feel like, oh, it's time. I done took over Babylon and I'm going to let these people go. No, mm -hmm. God stirred up the spirit inside of him mm -hmm. that made him do this because. God is about to keep his promise. He is a promise keeper. He yes, said, he yes, you've been disobedient. You're going into captivity. But in 70 years, you're going to return to your homeland. Mm -hmm. This is now the appointed time. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the appointed time. And mm -hmm. God is going, he's so sovereign he can use whoever he wants to use mm -hmm. to do what's needed to be done. Amen. God, God can do that. Mm -hmm. There have been different, um, different presidents and different things in the earth that people say, oh, God is using him to do this because we don't see any oh. other way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I won't get into politics today, though. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so it, it is something I wanted to say though. Uh, when we say the Lord stirred up the spirit of King Cyrus of Persia, um, Twyla, read that scripture in, in uh, yellow for us. Can you see it today on the screen? Yes. Okay. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he turns it wherever he wishes. Proverbs. 21 one. Yes. See, that that's the power of God. Mm -hmm. You know, even in our society, and we have leaders and we think things are not uh, going right. The Bible tells us that we should always pray for those who are in authority, mm -hmm. not for their agenda to be accomplished, but that they might do what God would have them to do. Mm -hmm. So the king's heart, the president's heart mm -hmm. is in the hand of the Lord mm -hmm. and he can turn it just like the rivers of the water, whatever way he wishes. Yeah, That's the power of God. That is why we had a, a, a Supreme Court justice that went in as a starch Republican and was going to uh, vote super uh, conservative. And something happened 
his heart changed and he started voting for the things that his counterparts <laughs> were not for. Right. But when, when the king's heart hmm. is in the hand of the Lord, he can turn it. So that's the Bible tells us to always pray for those who are in authority. It, it doesn't mean I, that they, we like them, they my party, I'm not their party. No, pray for them that his will will be accomplished <laughs> because God has the power to turn them. And that, that just gives me a lot of peace. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. In those scriptures that Daphne read, see when when the Lord touches you, <laughs> you you do some acknowledgments that you didn't even know where that was coming from. He acknowledged the Lord as the Lord God of heaven. He acknowledged Him, the Lord God of heaven, because we we know in those times in the ancient world. Those rulers thought that every territory had their own God. It was territorial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I notice here that he said he acknowledged the Lord as God of heaven. You know, it's a little bit more than just a territorial God. In those uh, passages, the decree addressed two kinds of people. Did anybody pick up on what two kinds of people that uh, King Cyrus was talking to? Two groups of people. Oh, do I need to go back to that scripture or y'all got your Sunday school books? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think. Any of you that are among his people, mm -hmm. Jewish people, Oh. That's one. Okay. It was it, oh. it it boils down to a state of mind also. There were those who wanted to return to, to their land, mm -hmm. but there were those who preferred to remain in, in Babylon. Mm -hmm. Some people were born in Babylon. Mm -hmm. They they were living a good life. They don't want to leave it. So he told them, those of you who want to return to your land, that you can go. And those that you want to remain here in Babylon. But he addressed those that even remain that you still need to give an offering to finance the expenses of the journey where the people are going to uh, restore the temple. You still need to, to give toward that. Is, any, is anybody reminded of another big event in history in the Old Testament that happened? Can you compare this to another Exodus? Because <laughs> some people call this the second Exodus. Mm. What happened um, in the first Exodus? The Egyptians gave uh, uh, all, all the Jews gold and silver and all and clothes and scarlets and all the beautiful things uh, that they needed on their journey. Yes, yes. They loaded them mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. they, they, they gave, I love God because, you know, he always provides. Yes. <laughs> yes. He yes. always provides. So mm -hmm. some people said all the, um, you know, that all that they had, not all that they had, but they left rich and yeah, and um, some people say they stole it, mm -hmm. and I got tickled. I heard TDJ say they didn't steal it. Mm -hmm. Didn't work four hundred years for nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was do them. Yes, <laughs> you you worked them for four hundred uh, years, bricks without straw, and no, they ain't steal nothing. You owe them. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so now we find that their neighbors evidently they had a good uh, rapport with the neighbors that they were gonna give them some to go on the journey and all those that remained behind they were gonna give them something to go on the journey yep did anybody else get anything else out of these passages that we just read um
So what what was their mission? To rebuild the house. house the house of God in Jerusalem. And to go back and repopulate the cities. Mm -hmm. Okay. But but as but as the word said before, uh, uh, only a remnants, mm -hmm. because not everybody was going to go back, as we were talking about before. You know yeah. that there was, right. there's going to be a, a remnants of people. You know, and some did mm -hmm. stay in Babylon because uh, they they had good lives. Uh, one of the uh, they wanted them to assimilate because uh, what they were looking at was a stronger overall community. After they conquered them, they absorbed those people in and they made their and they made their community overall stronger because they uh they try to keep some of their people happy by letting them keep some of their worship by mm -hmm. letting them assimilate and having businesses and things of that nature so some people said hey we really not slaves you know we're, we're you know we got good lives here why should i go back over there since yeah. I don't know nothing about over there yeah. and, 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 and start all over again. I'm going to stay where I'm planted and I'm going to flourish. And, and that's what how some of them were looking at. And that's what some of them did. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, I love it the way God can stir the hearts of other people to bless you too. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. He can stir the hearts of others to bless you. And this, this is what we saw happening here, you know, even their neighbors, other people blessed them as they were leaving. Mm -hmm. And we know, and we don't get into it today, but we know they left to do a good a deed. Now, some people were happy to see them, but not everybody. Right. <laughs> that opposition stuck at its ugly head, as it always does. Okay. That's why when we get those 5,000 people that Brother Wade was praying for, everybody won't be happy. <laughs> but we got to embrace and move on because we're on God's agenda. Amen. Not say Mary's agenda, we're on God's agenda. It's not about building up church membership. It's building up, it's about building up God's kingdom. Amen. It's a kingdom agenda, not, not a church membership agenda. So that's Amen. why I could receive what you were saying, uh, Brother Way, in your yeah, prayer this morning. Because sometimes we get it twisted. Mm -hmm. It's not about church membership. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's as, about, uh, go ahead. As I like to say, Sister <laughs> Smith, uh, as before, you know, God doesn't count numbers. He makes numbers count. He can take the few. Yes. And, and, and put the mini on the run. And, mm -hmm. and when you start praying, you know, and whatever, because we have to be bold in our prayer. We have to believe, but be bold. But mm -hmm. then we have to be satisfied with God's answer that he gives us. Because whatever he sends us, we're going to uh, 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 praise him and bless him for and use it for the uh, further uh, keep of his kingdom. And then God blesses more and more because what does his word say? If you're faithful over a few things, I'll make you rule over many. Yeah, so yeah. we just have to take it here. And as you hear pastors say, you have to be careful stewards with what God has given us. Mm -hmm. And then we grow, we grow, we grow. But, mm -hmm. And sometimes it, it's just, you know, one of those things of, you know, making sure that you remain faithful to what God has, and then you stay steadfast. Because yeah. once again, we only get three answers from God, and, and we only like one. We get wait, and whoa, God, no, 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 God, you don't know. I need that right now. I know. Matter of fact, God, I needed it yesterday, and then we get no. And it's like, whoa, God, what are you talking about? No. I, I, yes, yes. You know, and then when we get yes, we like, oh, God, keep it coming. That's what I want to hear. Yeah. You know, so so you know, God gives us to our capacity. God will give to St. Mary's capacity at the time, at appointed time and appointed place. And when we have Amen. more capacity, we will continue to grow. But in Amen. the meantime, when we're at that full capacity, we should still be praising God, using what we have for the Amen. further upkeep of his kingdom, and then we can move forward. That's right. Amen. Amen. And he's going to do it. Yes, Amen. Amen. Because when I think about St. Mary as a church that came out of uh, a prayer meeting, 
you know, those, those sisters and brothers prayed this church into being it. And that's why I still got so much hope for that little church on the corner because it's not in my time, it's in God's time on what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And I think he sent us the vision if we would just be obedient to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think it's coming. A pastor came to our church saying, greater is coming. Mm -hmm. So it's like God, I know, stirred that up in his heart to put that in our minds that greater is coming. It's coming. You know, and, and he didn't say it was coming in nine years or 10 years. It's coming. Mm -hmm. So Saint Mary is a church that's just like David, small but mighty. Yes, 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 yes. See, Charlotte uh, popped on my screen for some reason, and I'm thinking of her, her great grandmother. And mm -hmm. I, of course, I was but a child, but they were sitting on, and on those side pews, and boy, they would praise God, and them little hill, wooden hills would get the moving and it sound like drums in the church, you know, mm -hmm. and it was the heels of their shoes. And they, they just, they, they did it in sync and rhythm and beat. And then the church just caught on fire. Mm -hmm. you know? these, mm -hmm. were, these were praying warriors, you yes. know, young people get up to do the second Sunday message. One of them ladies got happy one time, rolled up her Sunday school book and threw it at the young man that was speaking. <laughs> <laughs> that was Miss Carrie Jones. That's who our missionary society is named after. Oh, but what oh. they didn't know, sometimes those people encouraged us, yeah. you know, to keep on going. Amen. They encouraged yeah. us. Amen. We thought we had really got up there and really and did, did something. something. That's true. <laughs> That's true. And they would say stuff to us to make us feel like that. And we might not have been doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. but it kept us. It kept us going. It kept us learning. It kept us coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thank God for that. Yes, so, ma'am. So does anybody else have anything they want to add before we go to the next section? We open. <laughs> All right. Cyrus's decree. This is verses, since I'm looking at you, Charlize, can you read verses five through eight? And then we're just going to throw in 11 at the same time, although the writer didn't include uh, those verses of uh, between. The heads of the families of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites, everyone whose spirit God had stirred, got ready to go up and rebuild the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. All their neighbors aided them with silver vessels, with gold, with goods, with animals, and with valuable gifts. Besides all that was freely offered. King Cyrus himself brought out the vessels of the house of the Lord that Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and placed in the house of his gods. Mm -hmm. King, mm -hmm. King Cyrus of Persia had them released. All right. Yeah. Now, okay. why do y'all think that scripture started off with the heads of the families of Judah and Benjamin? Wasn't it 12 tribes of Israel? <laughs> that these were the, this was the largest and the smallest. Judah was the largest and Benjamin was the smallest. Okay, so uh, yeah. after Solomon died, what happened, historians? <laughs> after Solomon died, what happened to the kingdom that consisted of 12 tribes? They split. They split. Yeah. The northern kingdom. Northern. Mm -hmm. They had gotten invaded by the Assyrians and taken away. Yeah. But these people, Judah mm -hmm. and Benjamin, they were the tribes that got exiled to Babylon because mm -hmm. they were parts of the southern kingdom. We had the northern and the southern kingdom. And now in God's time, the heads of the families of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites. And I like this. Everyone who spirit God stirred. Mm -hmm. see, mm -hmm. God stirred their spirit. And they got up and got ready to rebuild the house of the Lord. It reminds me later on in Nehemiah, um, and the people had a mind to work. 
<laughs> you know, yeah. here it says that God stirred them up mm -hmm. and they got ready to go up and rebuild the house of the Lord. So we're thankful for that. Mm -hmm. All the neighbors aided them with all the silver, the gold, the goods, the animals, and all of that. And here's an interesting thing. King Cyrus himself, uh -huh. he brought back all of the possessions that, the, that King Nebuchadnezzar, I'm going to say stole, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. from Jerusalem and put in his house of his gods. And now I'm seeing in this scripture, see, God's ready to make a move. The people are getting ready to go. And it's like, give me back what you stole. <laughs> it's a return of the wealth. So he brought out all of those things that Nebuchadnezzar went in the temple and took. They going back. You know, it's, it's the return of their wealth going back. All right. Charles, there's 11. Okay. The total of the gold and silver vessels was 5,400. And all these Seshbazar brought up when the exiles were brought up from Babylonia to Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's that's uh, that's more of the, the total of gold and silver vessels. All of that was brought up. Sheshbazar, they say, some people think he was a Rubabel, but the when you check the history of it, he was just a, a, a leader of the Jewish uh, temple and mm -hmm. people there, and and that's how he's defined in many. Um, not not Jerubabel, because Jerubabel was a governor, but yes. but he was much younger than this person, according to the history uh, that I read. Mm -hmm. Mr. Smith. Yes. One of the things I look at uh, this, uh, uh, um, that anything God calls you to do, he'll yeah. equip you with. Yes. And, and, yeah. and, and, and that was the call. That was the call to go back. And, and how could they go back? Because they, uh, some of the slaves didn't have anything. Right. But, but, but uh, so when they didn't have anything, you know, God, uh, uh, God equipped them. He equipped them with gold, and silver, yeah. mules, you know, animals and things of that nature. Uh, as you were talking about the Exodus before, how they were given uh, uh, silk raiments, how they were given yes. silver, gold, except for this time, they didn't uh, have Aaron to uh, fashion that, uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm getting ready to say, fashion yeah. that idol, you know, they didn't have an Aaron to fashion the idol, but you saw how God provided once again, the Exodus, you're leaving, you're not going to leave that empty handed. And, the, and that's, that's the that's the whole point, and that's the point for us to remember today. If if God said He was going to do something, God is ready to make that move. He is going to give you the provisions to do what He has stirred up in your heart to accomplish. He wouldn't ask us to do something without giving us the provisions to do it. So he says, go back, rebuild my temple so my people can come and worship me. Um, they, 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 they out of the exile. Mm -hmm. I told him I was going to return them. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's never going to, uh, Charlize, I, all your business adventures. <laughs> he's never mm -hmm. going to uh, put an idea in your mind to accomplish something so that you could glorify him and yeah. him not give you the provisions to do it. Can I add something? Sure. Um, I, as I'm looking at this, I, I think one of the things that really stand out to me is that everybody worked together. Yeah. Like, I was mm -hmm. able to use everybody to do certain things for this to even come about. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were willing to do those things. That's right. Yes. Out. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, my laptop is about to run out of juice. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. I was looking for my plug, but maybe it'll get me through this. You're right. And if if I go out, y'all, if my laptop run out, y'all know why. Y'all keep on talking about the lesson. <laughs> okay. All right. 
Thomas, do you see it? Okay. Okay. If God not only stirred the spirit of Cyrus to grant freedom to the captives, but he also stirred the hearts of the Jews to give them the desire to return to Judah. There we go again. God stirring the hearts. Because yeah. what was the mission? The mission would be to rebuild the temple. And the temple was going to be financed through the assistance of the neighbors of the Jews who were to contribute offerings. So sometimes God, God will stir our hearts uh, even in today, not the Babylonian time. He might just stir your heart to give an extra offering. Mm -hmm. You know? He mm -hmm. might stir your heart to make a phone call and just tell somebody we love you, we miss you, whatever. Mm -hmm. And God has done that in my life and, and I, I, I try to hear him and do what he says and the response from the people, it, it just blows my mind. It was like, how did you know? <laughs> I needed this so much. Mm. I say that was God stirring mm. the hearts, <laughs> mm. you know, for me to do whatever it was that he wanted me to do. And I just say to God, be the glory. Amen. You know, take no nothing for that, but God be the glory. Mm -hmm. Thank Sister you, Charlotte. Smith. Okay. Sister Smith, real quick, how I saw that work was okay. uh, 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 just with the Super, Super Bowl giving. You know, uh, uh, mm -hmm. God stirred up uh, a Mona's heart. To, yeah. to, to, and she said, hey, let me contact some of my friends. Yeah. And, you know, besides what we were going to do and mm -hmm. ask them, you know, to tell them what was going on and the giving and, and, and they gave and, yeah. and they gave mightily, you yeah. know. So so God, look at God just staring up, staring up, you know, uh, the hearts, uh, you know, to give. And that was free will, you know, mm -hmm. and we have to one thing we have to know about these uh, offerings and, and, and we get good. We get good, good sound uh gospel doctrine here is mm -hmm. that some people use some other stuff but these these they, they weren't core course they weren't made to give it's free right. will for god right. loved the cheerful giver and, yeah. and so you know uh, uh you, you have to you know realize that and look at the work because when she asked they gave and they mm -hmm. gave mightily and, and that's a blessing it's a yeah. blessing to be a blessing, but then you just look at look at how God works. He works in the background. We don't know how we're going to get this done. Well, you know what? Your portion of it maybe is to call, maybe to put on Facebook, you know, to ask. And yeah. then that's your part. And then God has a part for somebody else to do. That's right. And I'm, I'm often reminded of the scripture that says, stir up the gift in you. There and you I just to think about that. What is the gift? And mm -hmm. then I read that when we uh, confess Jesus Christ, we're baptized, we're born again, and we receive, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the gift. Yeah, that's the gift. Stir it up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nothing you can't do uh, 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 without God. Amen. You got to have God. You can't do nothing on your own. But with God, all things are possible. Stir up the gift that is in you. You know, give to the Holy Spirit. All right. Charlotte, thank you for sharing because we really do. She said, I saw what people were working together. Mm -hmm. They were giving. It wasn't about keeping. And you know, y'all saw people like that. They want to keep everything of theirs to themselves and their family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and mm -hmm. never leave in my house. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. Years and years ago, when we would have the Christmas drive and we were trying to get people to donate stuff for families and, well, I got to take care of my own house for Christmas with some of the replies that we got, <laughs> you know, I can't be doing that, you know, but they sure said people were willing to share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. A stirring. Yeah. All right, now the arrival in Jerusalem, we're going to go 64 through 17. Can somebody read that, please? Sister Battles? I, yes, ma'am. Can you read 64 through 70, please, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Those who are similarly together was 42,360. 
Besides their male and female servants, of whom there were 7,337, and they had 200 male and female seniors. They had 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels, and 6,720 donkeys. As soon as they came to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, some of the heads of families made farewell offerings for the house of God to erect it on his site. According to their resources, they gave to the building fund 61,000 <laughs> derricks of <laughs> gold, 5,000 mi minus of silver, and 100 priestly robes. The priests, the Levites, and some of the people lived in Jerusalem and its vicinity, and the singers, the gatekeepers, and the female servants lived in their towns and all Israel in their towns. Okay. Oh, yeah, you were, you were in a different version, right? That's okay. I'm just catching that? That's okay. They get the, the lesson give us two. <laughs> and I thought I was I thought I was in the you good. In RSV. You good. Okay. I thought I was in, in this in RSV. Yeah. You good. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Sister Battles. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Um now, well, you said something in there I wanted to ask you all about. Oh, <laughs> 69. <laughs> Verse 69, what does 69 say? That elusive <laughs> building fund. <laughs> yeah, they had a building fund. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did get took that about the building fund. <laughs> yes. That building fund boy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Uh, it says that they gave after their ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that says a lot to me. You know, people were given, um, they weren't trying to one up each other or mm -hmm. to show off how much they could give, uh, how much giving they could do. Mm -hmm. They gave according to their ability, yeah. you know, and that's what we need to remember. I, I, I remember when our church first became a tithing church and people were saying, oh, I can't tithe like so and so. Yeah. And, and we had to tell them, <laughs> no tenth of what you got, my yeah. tenth ain't no more than your tenth. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you're giving a tenth of what you got, that's your tithe. Don't that's stop. Right. Get your eyes off of what other people are giving. That's right. You you do what your tenth is, I do what my tenth is, and it's equal in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. You know, give, they gave after their ability. Yes. They weren't trying to show up, or, or none of that. Mm -hmm. So the first order of business for those returning was to erect the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The heads of the family led in the effort by making free will offerings according to their resources. And then since the battles told us the priests and the Levites lived in Jerusalem and its vicinity and all the people lived in their own towns. Yes. I, and I'm gonna ask if anybody else has anything else to say, but I do want us, when I started off saying, why do y'all think God want us studying this in 2022. How may we apply that to our thinking and to our lives? Can anybody give me one answer? <laughs> An answer. Uh, two things. <laughs> um, go ahead, Charles. Okay. Brother Wade will sum it all up. You go on, baby. Get yours while you can. <laughs> Um, I love it, way. <laughs> it's speaking to me personally, um, just for the simple fact of the business ventures that I do have, yeah. and the gifts that I know God has given me to use uh, for his kingdom. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I think that those, some, some of the gifts that I have are supposed to be used to help build up his kingdom. 
um, through uh, being at St. Mary and being a part of a church family. Uh, and I know that, you know, to build up his kingdom, like I mentioned earlier, you have to have support and you have to have a system of working together. And mm -hmm. what better place to have to build up a kingdom is with your church family. Yes, yes. So it's, it's Very all right. Anybody else before Mr. Two Things come? <laughs> Those of you, and I know y'all will be back, but we love Brother Wade and we're always t t talking to him about, or he's always reminding us about what start with an aura, Brother Wade. Relationship. <laughs> Relationship. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we love it, Brother Way. We love it. Oh, my goodness. Yes, that, yes. Means that the youth are here. Anybody else real quick for the youth come? Come on, anybody. Jackie, I see you lit up. No, I'm good. Okay, Brother Way. I'm good. Uh, real quick, and what I like about this is when you start looking at, the, the title of the lesson was uh, Babylonian Captivity Ends. How right. I can apply it to myself, uh, yes. and we can all apply it to ourselves is, is is the captivity of whatever we have when yes. god delivers us from that captivity yes. what are we going to do are we going to yes. get busy working and we're yes. going to get busy working for the furthest of god's kingdom or are we going to try to go back to egypt and when that egypt uh, of course recognizing uh semblance of sin are we going to go ahead and, and it's okay to go back to a city as we saw and then but if you're going to go back flourish and go back and flourish uh, where you're planted in the word of God, doing the will of God. Amen. Okay, very good. And that's what I meant by that. And as, and as Charles also said, and, mm -hmm. I, and we'll end by just remembering that God is a promise keeper. He will do what he said he will do. He will, do. He will never leave us or forsake us. You know, Amen. they were in captivity. And he saw him through for 70 years, through the lion's den, through the, uh, through the fire, God was there, you know, and he will never require us to do anything that he won't provide for. Amen. 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 And we're going to give over to the youth review and thank you all adult class for sharing. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, today our lesson came from Ezra, the first chapter, 1 through 8 and 11, and then second chapter, 64 through 70. And it said, uh, free to go home. So we're going to let uh, our young people, we had Dicarius, Diabra, and Becca come in their own way with whatever they want to say. If they want to say anything, if not, we'll say good morning and thank you. Today's lesson was about helping God and being present and listening to actually help the people around you in Jesus Christ. Thank you. Victorious? Uh, what I got from today's lesson is that, is that we should accept we should accept blessings that come to us. And it might be a person that we don't know or we don't like, but <laughs> when they put a blessing in front of us, yes, we should take it. Because we don't never we never know if we might get that blessing again, or it might be a blessing that could change our life forever. Mm-hmm. Oh, and there are times like it's it's like times when God might use other people to bless bless you, or He might use you to bless somebody else. Yes. And that's just that's just, that's just every that's that's just what He wants us to bless. He wants other people to bless us, and wants us to bless other people, so that makes them happy. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. I know my pastor's smiling. <laughs> okay. Uh, Becca, you got anything? If not, that's okay. Or if you do, let's go. 
I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Sister Smith. Yes. Pastor Pay. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you, uh, Decorius and Diabra, um, uh, for your feedback. And Becca, it's good to see you back again this week. And for all of those who are here with us, um, it's, it's great to be in Sunday school. Um, real quick, um, one of the things that I want to share uh, is, you know, this is about captivity being ended, about going home, about freedom. We need to understand that our freedom is not about our fun, but about the Father. He set us free for himself. And so as you read the scripture, and Sister Smith, you did a great job. You took you, you really stole my thunder because I was all excited about sharing this. But over and over again, the, the point of them going back to Jerusalem was not just so that they could rule themselves. It was not so that they could make money. It was not even so that they could be happy. The point of them going back to Jerusalem was to build the temple. They were set free so that they could relate with God. Now, in this day and age, and you're going to hear me talk about this later as well, when everybody's fighting for our rights and our freedom and all of this, and God wants us to be free. You know, God wants us to worship him. And if our freedom is about satisfying our own needs and making sure that I can keep up with the Joneses and all of that, God's not part of that. God's desire is for us to be closer to him. And he will set us free so that we can do that. But if we're looking for anything else, it's just not going to happen. And so as we look at this lesson and talk about how we can apply it to ourselves, yes, God wants us to set us free, but he wants us to set us free to live with him. That's all I have. Any questions or comments? And all the blessings is a side dish, right? <laughs> if I get God, I get all the blessings with it. That's right. That, 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 that's, that's, that's just the point. I mean, we all want, I want the stuff. Well, you know, stuff rusts. That's right. But if I've got God, I, I've got everything that I need and um, and even more because I can only see what I think that's good enough. And God's no man, you, I has not seen. Hmm. Ear has not heard. And too often, yeah. like I said, we, we running around settling for a half full cup talking about, oh, I'm so blessed. And God's like, um, you know, I got oceans of stuff. But since you're satisfied with your cup, I'll just let you, <laughs> I'll let you have your cup. But if I get him, I get the ocean too. Praise God. All right. Okay. Um, thank you again, everybody. Um, always great to see you. Look forward to worshiping with you. Let us share together in the church school creed. I believe, I believe my AME, my church, AME school. church school. Oh. Must, must, must grow, grow and grow. And, and, and that I, I must make a top it. priority. A top priority. So, to make it to so. Make it so. Every, every member a Christian. Every, every Christian a worker. worker every, every worker trained. trained. So that, so that a worker, worker not, not, not to be ashamed. ashamed. This, this we ask in, in Jesus, Jesus' name. name. Amen. 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 Uh, God bless you all. Looking forward to seeing you in the next uh, 37 minutes as we will go wild and worship God. And hopefully we will continue the spirit that we brought to this Sunday school class um, and bring it to this worship service, either virtually or in person. Looking forward to worshiping with you. God bless. Amen. Amen. Amen.